never thought much about the simple but very necessary task of breathing until my newborn son, Brady, was diagnosed with a rare, life-shortening genetic disease called cystic fibrosis. I learned that cystic fibrosis, or CF, would impact many of Brady's organs, most dangerously the lungs, which in CF slowly fill with mucus and scar tissue until most patients need a lung transplant at some point to extend their lives. When Brady was born, the median life expectancy was 37 years old. And the fear of outliving my baby and the challenges that he might face paralyzed me at first until it propelled me into an entirely new world. Now, I had studied chemistry at the University of Idaho, which gave me just enough background and confidence to feel like I should dive deep into the world of genetic research and pharmaceutical development. So, as a mom on a mission, I set out attending these massive cystic fibrosis research conferences, and the story that I'm about to report from the last decade of scientific breakthroughs is nothing short of a miracle. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disease which means that my son Brady got one genetic mutation from me and another from my husband Brock. There are about 30,000 Americans living with cystic fibrosis, and about one in 30 Caucasians is a symptomless carrier of the mutation like my husband and I. Cystic fibrosis causes one cellular protein to be dysfunctional called CFTR. In the body, that protein is found in epithelial cells or mucous membranes that line the airways, the gut, and the tiny ducts in our organs. The CFTR protein is responsible for maintaining a watery, lubricating layer on the surface of those cells. It's within that watery airway surface liquid in the lungs that the hair-like cilia beat to clear pathogens and bacteria from the airways. In cystic fibrosis, that airway surface liquid becomes dehydrated and sticky, like oatmeal left on the stove too long. Chronic infection and inflammation set in that lead to a lifetime of decreasing lung function. And let me tell you that watching your child struggle to breathe is a special kind of torture. And as a baby and toddler, Brady there spent more than two hours a day inhaling medications into his lungs and doing airway clearance treatments with this blue vest that shook him up, um, hopefully to move things out. He had probably swallowed more pills by the age of five than many do in a lifetime. But two exciting paths of research to effectively treat the disease had clearly emerged. The first scientists had been in pursuit of since the mapping of the human genome and the discovery of the CF gene in 1989. I'm talking about gene editing, messenger RNA editing. Maybe you've heard of CRISPR-Cas9 editing. These techniques represent potential for a one-time cure for everyone with cystic fibrosis, or any disease rooted in a genetic mutation for that matter. The research is ongoing and very exciting, but it's still years from clinical availability to patients with cystic fibrosis. But there was another, more immediate and very promising line of research to treat the root cellular dysfunction of cystic fibrosis by restoring the critical CFTR protein function using small molecules, drugs. And this approach was already in clinical trials in humans when Brady was a baby. I was blown away with hope for what this might mean for his future, and I became quickly convinced that policy work and advocacy 
was how I needed to be spending my time if I wanted to keep Brady breathing. So at the center of both policy and research sits the nonprofit Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, started by some determined, desperate parents back in the 1950s when cystic fibrosis was a death sentence. Doctors didn't even understand the basics of the disease, and children with CF were not expected to live to attend elementary school. But their unwillingness to accept that nothing could be done, their grit and determination, their policy work and advocacy set the ball rolling, and I never forget it. I am so thankful for the daring leadership of people like Dr. Bob Bell, who was an executive at the foundation for more than 30 years and had the guts to take some massive risks and bet on our kids with research when everyone thought we were crazy for even trying. Because cystic fibrosis is so rare, no federal funds go directly to CF research. So families raise the money themselves and give it to the CF Foundation, who then turns around and invests it in promising but sometimes risky research ventures that would otherwise go unfunded. But it's through the CF Foundation that I began to build relationships with key scientists working on the cure, and I learned how to effectively advocate for the policies that would advance the pace to the cure and protect, protect access to the science uh, that we're about to get into right now. I've made many, many trips to Washington, D.C., uh, because politics got all sorts of personal for me. But let's go back to biology class for a second, because now we're going to talk about this epithelial cell here that we see on the screen. This is maybe an airway cell, like a lung cell. In a healthy individual, that critical CFTR protein would be synthesized down here in the cell and folded using a correct set of genetic instructions. It would then pass through the cellular quality control mechanism in the endoplasmic reticulum and make it all the way to its final destination, the cell surface here, where its job is to act as a channel or a gate to open and close and allow ions to flow out of the cell. That ion flow out of the cell is the critical function to maintain that healthy airway surface liquid. And these are the issues that the scientists are attempting to address with drugs. Zooming in even further, this is an actual picture of the CFTR protein. Look at this jumbled mass of spaghetti. It is complicated, right? There are a lot of ways that this can go wrong. But the two fundamental issues are the formation of a correct protein and then having that protein do its job of opening and closing like a gate at the cell surface. So scientists set out with the task of looking for molecules that could alter the critical protein's dysfunctional fate. Now, this is the equivalent of trying to find a single burned-out light bulb in the entire United States of America. Impossible, even in many lifetimes, if you are searching one bulb at a time. But using a new technology, developed by the National Institutes of Health called High Throughput Screening, scientists were, be, were able to begin screening entire states all at once for that light bulb. Molecules began to be discovered, and soon two new classes of drugs were born. One called correctors that act during the protein formation, and one called potentiators that act like WD-40 at the cell surface to coax open this rusty gate. In 2012, the first small molecule to treat the root cellular dysfunction of cystic fibrosis was approved by the FDA. A potentiator, the WD-40, called Ivacaftor, 
Brady started taking this medicine and it changed his life. He went from struggling to breathe, hours of breathing treatments every day, multiple surgeries for inflammation. He had zero sense of smell because of horrible sinus polyps and he took constant bouts of heavy duty antibiotics and steroids to basically just swallowing his pills and feeling great. It felt like my wildest dream come true. And it inspired me to get my first tattoo. I have a molecule, the Ivacaftor molecule, uh, on my left foot, along with the words, honor the gift. But as miraculous as this was, it was just the beginning, because as it turns out, the vast majority of cystic fibrosis patients don't even have that protein in the right spot. And in fact, when this drug was approved by the FDA, only 4% of the CF population was eligible. It was very bittersweet, but Brady was one of those people. The research continued, and soon two more molecules were approved by the FDA, this time correctors. And adding these molecules to our tool belt meant that we could effectively treat 50% of the cystic fibrosis population. We're getting there. And just a few months ago, history was made again when the FDA approved a cocktail of two correctors plus a potentiator to treat effectively 90% of the cystic fibrosis population. Unbelievable. Adding decades and immeasurable quality to thousands of people's lives. And as odd as it sounds, cystic fibrosis turns out to be the best of the rare, crappy diseases because there is a community of relentless people working toward the cure and this incredible centralized nonprofit that happens to be pioneering the way to genetic cures. Brady started taking this new drug cocktail just a few weeks ago, and it still feels so surreal. Watching this medicine, this lifeline, roll out to families all across the country has been one of the greatest pleasures of my life. People describe things like being able to take the first deep breath they can ever remember in their lives, clearing infections that they've had in their lungs for decades, and simple things like being able to laugh without coughing. But don't take my word for it because I love data and there's some incredible data to back this up. And what we're looking at here you don't have to be a scientist to see that this is lung function over time here. And day, by day 15, you see a massive, dramatic increase in lung function that is sustained. The CFTR protein is working again. The cilia are clearing pathogens from the airways again. What this translates to is fewer hospitalizations fewer antibiotics, quality of life. I am so thankful. Brady, Brady, this is all about Brady, has a normal life expectancy now. And all the opportunities that we all want for our kids. But it's not done because there are still a percentage of people with cystic fibrosis that don't make any CFTR protein at all. And these drugs won't work for them, and they're still relying on that one-time cure that we talked about uh, way back at the beginning. And for me, honoring the gift that I've been given and that we've been given means that we keep that ball rolling. And my friend who works in policy at the CF Foundation, I think, captured the sentiment and the resolve of our community best when he said, when nearing the end of a race, 
You don't slow down to admire how close you're getting to the finish line. You step on the gas. You blast through till the end. Until it's done means that we won't stop until 100% of people with cystic fibrosis have an effective treatment and a cure. Anything's possible. Thank you.